Welcome to today's episode, 20 Things for 20 Years. If you didn't know, I turned 20 on Friday, February 17th, and I had a really good day. It was awesome. I really enjoyed spending time with people that I love and getting messages from people that I love, and I just really felt loved and appreciated, so it was a really good day. I really felt loved and appreciated, and I'm really grateful for that. I decided to do a podcast episode on this and kind of commemorate 20 years. So I'm going to share 20 things I'm proud of, 20 things I'm grateful for, and 20 things I've learned. I just want to preface this by saying that these things are not in order of how proud I am of them, or how grateful I am for them, or how important I think they are from what I've learned. They're just kind of random. And I think I even move some around a little bit just because. So, you have to know that they are not in any particular order. They are very much random, as I was writing these down. So, let's start with 20 things I'm proud of. I was thinking about things that I could talk about, and I guess it ends up being 60 things, but 20 things of each topic. And one of the things that came to mind were things that I was just proud of, things that I've accomplished so far in life that I thought would be fun to share. I wrote 20 down, so here we go. Okay, number one. I'm graduating college next year. I'm actually graduating a year early, which is really exciting and saves me money, which is also really exciting. I'm not exactly sure my plans yet. That's a tomorrow problem, but I know I do need to go and want to go to grad school. So that's definitely going to happen. I don't know at what point and I don't know what school because that's a tomorrow problem, but I am graduating college next year. I'm really excited about it. I came into college with 23 credits from high school and dual enrollment and everything. And so that was really nice and I'm really grateful for that. Number two, I've had my blog for three years and eight months. Isn't that crazy? I was thinking about the future and telling people how long I've had my blog or how long I've had a podcast. And I was thinking before I started my podcast that I would have had it for about three years and a half. So I've had my blog for three years and a half and then my podcast for X minus three years and a half. And I'm really excited for that. I think it will be fun in the future to be like, yeah, I've had this for this long and I plan on keeping it up. I plan on continuing to keep the podcast going and keep my blog going. It's a lot easier to be consistent on a podcast and post twice a week than on my blog because I have high expectations for how well I want the writing to be. And I don't just get inspired all the time. So I definitely am working on that. But it is harder a little bit with a blog to be consistent just because I want to be inspired and write something good and not just write to write. Number three, I started a podcast and have run it for four months. I'm really proud of this. I actually fought it at first, but I had one friend who was pretty persistent. And I thank you now. I'm sure you're listening. So I love you. Thank you. And then I had another friend who actually got me more started because she said, why don't you just look up how much a microphone is on Amazon? And I didn't even think about that. And then she said that, and I was like, oh yeah, that is true. I could totally just do that. It'd be easy. So I did it, and here we are. I'm really grateful. Okay, number four, I moved out. It's so weird being an adult and thinking, wow, I used to live at home. I used to be a little child. I used to be completely dependent on my parents and now I'm dependent on myself. I've got it to where I can live life and survive on my own, which is just so weird. As parents, you know, you try to teach your children how to fly so that when you kick them out of the nest, they can soar off into the sky. But it's just so weird. I moved out. That's crazy. And not even just recently. It was almost two years ago. I think it's two years ago, right? Well, I moved out in August of 21, so it's been a year and a half. Almost, yeah, exactly. Almost exactly a year and a half. Dang. So I moved out. Number five, I bought a car. That was exciting too. I bought my first car. It has had some issues. Not really. I just had some trouble with the tires and things, but so far it's been good. I will have to get new tires in August, but for now I'm just (laughs) making do with what I have. My dad was really nice, and when I visited Arizona recently, 
he rotated my tires for me because the mechanics didn't want to break this certain par and yada 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 and my dad was like I'll do it so anyway thank you dad I really appreciate it I bought a car okay number six I traveled to the east coast for FSY it was the coolest experience ever to go where the lord wanted me to go I will do what you want me to do. I will go where you want me to go. And I went to where he wanted me to go. I went to Virginia and I went to Colorado. That's not the East Coast, but I went to Colorado and then I went to Virginia, which is the East Coast, and Maryland and Utah, of course. And it was just so fun and so cool. And I loved getting the opportunity to serve the youth out there as well, rather than just the youth here in Utah. It's interesting how there are different cultures outside of just Utah As in, some of these kids from different places drove hours and hours to come to FSY and they hadn't been in a group of people of their own beliefs and values. And so being together was this whole new thing for them. And in Utah, that's the norm. You know, you're just always around members and people that believe what you believe. And that is not the case outside of Utah. So that was really cool to experience and gave me a new perspective on life and just being grateful. Okay, Next, I've made a ton of friends. This kind of came from the FSY thing. That's how I remembered it (laughs) because I made a ton of friends on FSY. But I've also made a ton of friends at college. And one of my favorite things about that is making new friends and then deciding whether or not to continue to keep in contact after a class ends and a new semester begins and you don't see them anymore. And then continuing to hang out or continuing to talk you kind of get to decide who you want to be forever friends with. And it's awesome. It College just gives you the opportunity to meet so many people and create so many friendships. And I just love it. I really love it. Number eight, I am one of two institute choir presidents. I actually did not want to do this job <laughs> first. If you listen to one of my podcast episodes, because I'm pretty sure I explain it. Maybe I didn't actually. I need to go back and check. But I did not want to be the choir president at first. But luckily, the idea was put into my head. And so I kind of had time to think about it and ponder. And then when the choir director asked me, Sister Topham, I was so excited and ecstatic to get started. So that was good. The Lord knew I needed some time to think about it first. But I love it. And I'm proud of being one of the Institute Choir Presidents. I conduct class every Tuesday and Thursday. And I love the opportunity to talk to people and get to know names and Not be some weird girl that's just going around getting to know names. I actually have like a reason. Okay, number nine. I'm a hardworking college student. I'm really proud to say that I work really hard to be a good student and to learn and to get all my assignments done on time and before they're due because it's way nicer to me to not have to do them the night of. And I'm just proud that I work hard to be a good college student. Number ten. I have a fantastic job and work hard. I just love my job, and I'm proud of it. I love it. Okay, number 11, I'm a Sunday school teacher in my ward. I'm actually teaching Sunday school on Sunday, and that's going to be interesting. I think I've put two and a half to three hours into my lesson, and it's interesting because a lot of the students or YSA or whatever, they don't understand how much time and energy it takes to put into a lesson, And so I really hope that they appreciate it, but at the same time, maybe they won't. And that's okay too, because I did learn something. Number 12, one of the things I'm proud of is that I love to serve and minister to others. I love watching people's faces light up when they feel loved and known. And I love just smiling and letting other people know that I see them. Number 13, I'm really proud that I've grown my relationship with the Savior It's been a long road. It really has. But I'm really grateful for the outcome. I really truly feel grateful and feel loved. Number 14. I find myself laughing and smiling a lot. I am so proud of this because this was not me in high school. I mean it was, but it was just a little bit harder to laugh and smile because of chemical imbalances in my brain. And now I just laugh and smile at literally everything anything. (laughs) I just was laughing the other day because I was reading a book and the mom was parenting a certain way and I had just learned about it in class and I just laughed so hard (laughs) because I was like this isn't a good parenting style (laughs) and it was just so random and it was just a book that someone wrote many years ago and I'm just over here just smiling and laughing at it. It's just awesome. Number 15, I feel confident in who I am. I'm really proud of this. I love that I have had the opportunity to 
get to know who I am and find a foundational belief and core value of who I am and what I believe in college. And I really feel grateful that I am strong and confident in who I am. Crazy and weird and funky and I just love it. Number 16, I got endowed and went through the temple. I went through the temple March 2nd, 2022, and it was a really awesome experience. I had a lot of people that I loved there to support me, and I just loved it. Number 17, I'm proud that I go to the temple almost every week. I really enjoy it, and I've seen the blessings in my life. Number 18, I feel the spirit often. I feel really grateful that I am blessed with this. There was... A time in my life where I went months and months and months without feeling anything. Definitely not anything related to the spirit or peace or comfort. And so the fact that I get to feel it often now is the biggest blessing and the biggest miracle ever. It's simply a miracle every time and I'm so grateful. Shoot, I just went to things I'm grateful for. I'm proud of that. We haven't gotten to the grateful thing yet. <laughs> Number 19, I work in the temple once a month. I really enjoyed this. I work in the baptistry. And I love seeing the youth come in. Some of them are so tiny. And it's just so fun to hand them a youth large or an extra small and think, oh my gosh, they are just this tiny little thing. And I just love it. Number 20, I am proud that I'm saving to pay for a study abroad. I'm really excited for this. I'm a little bit nervous. Most of you probably know who are listening that I've been selling t-shirts as a fundraiser. So if you didn't know that and you're willing to buy one, I'm selling a shirt that says Embrace Imperfection on there, and then I'm selling another one that just has my podcast name. So reach out to me, either comment on YouTube or text me personally, or you can even respond to the Remind, and I'll get that. And I would truly love to have your support. If not, totally okay. Thank you for listening. 20 things I'm grateful for. Once again, no particular order. Number one, my cousin Keely. I didn't want to start naming people because then I would get 20 things immediately, but I really wanted to mention Keely specifically because she gave me my birthday present last night and it was the most thoughtful gift I have ever received. I know I'm getting emotional, but it was so good. She had 20 people write me letters since I turned 20. And I was reading through the letters last night and they are so special and kind and thoughtful and I'm a words of affirmation gal and so the fact that she went through that whole process of asking people to send her a letter and she formatted them and then printed them out and then put them in little envelopes it was just the sweetest kindest most thoughtful gift and it was spectacular and one of the fa- my favorite things about it is that I will have that gift for the rest of my life anytime I can go back and read them and it's just awesome I just really love it so Keely I'm extremely grateful for you not just because of that but thank you for doing that for me number two psychology and how much I've learned I'm so grateful for psychology I have loved learning about the human mind and why we do the things we do And some of the reasons why we act the way we act or why we think the things we think or why our bodies react in a certain way. It's just been so interesting and it has given me so much love and appreciation for the human body and for others. Number three, I'm really grateful for my roommates. They put a cute little party on for me on my birthday. They made me a cake. They have gotten me a little gift. I don't know what it is yet because they haven't come in the mail, but they are so excited to show me. And I just love how loved I feel by them. Number four, my family. Once again, no particular order or this would probably be (laughs) at least one or two. I'm really grateful for my family. Eight of the letters from Keely were from my family. Each and every person in my family. Each sibling and then my mom and dad. And I really appreciate it. And then of course I love my extended family. I love my grandma and my grandpa and my aunts and uncles. I just love my family and I'm grateful for them. Number five. I'm grateful for my friends. I'm especially grateful for my friends who listen to the podcast. Not just because, you know, listening to my podcast, but because of their continual support and care and love for me. Those are the people that are my lifelong friends. So if you're listening to this right now, you are my lifelong friend. I already know it. And I could probably start naming people off right now that I know are listening. And I think the fact that I can do that is miraculous and amazing. And I'm really grateful for you and for other friends. I love my friends and I'm grateful for them. 
Number six, I'm really, really grateful for laughter and smiles. I just love them. I love, 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 love laughing and smiling. It makes life so much better. Number seven, I'm grateful for books and movies. I just think it's fun. They're fun ways to connect to people. Books are fun ways to spend time with yourself, go into another world or galaxy or universe or setting, and it's just so much fun to get to explore different characters and get to know fictional people, honestly, and create connections through them and find more about yourself through the characters. Anyway, I'm grateful for books and movies. Number seven, I'm grateful for human connection. I love it. I just love human connection. That's one thing that's been really prevalent in my psychology classes and my FLHD classes, which is family life, home development. And I just love it. I love human connection. Number nine, I am grateful for college and knowledge. That rhymes. When I wrote that down, I did not think about it rhyming. And then I was like, oh my gosh, that rhymes. And I think it's funny. So anyway, I'm grateful for college and I'm grateful for knowledge. Number 10, I'm grateful for writing and journaling. I love that I can go back in the past and pick a random day and see what I was doing that day or how I felt that day or a picture from that day. It's amazing. And I can only imagine how wonderful it's going to be as the time goes on and the years go on to look back at what 7th grade Kyra thought or what 8th grade Kyra thought. And so I'm super, super excited to continue to write in my journal and continue to be blessed by looking back on what I wrote. Number 11, I'm really grateful to feel the spirit all the time. Like I said before, there was a time in my life when I didn't feel the spirit for a long, long time. And I questioned what was wrong with me and why that was the case. Nothing was wrong with me other than, you know, chemical imbalances in my head. But the fact that I get to feel the spirit so often now is one of the biggest blessings in my life. And I'm so grateful for it. Number 12, quality time with those I love. I feel like that's self-explanatory. I love spending time with people. Number 13, food. (laughs) I love food. It's so good. And I wrote down, especially when other people make it for me slash serve me. That sounds bad, but I mean, I appreciate when people think of me and they make me food because I hate cooking. And so it's really nice when other people do that for me. Okay, number 14, gift of discernment. I love this gift that I've been given, the ability to know and have a little bit of knowledge into how people are, and I love the ability to serve and be there for someone when they need it. There was this young woman in choir the other day, and this was a month or so ago, and I saw her, and I had this very distinct impression, like, you need to write her a note. And I saw her face and maybe looked at her energy or something, and she just looked down and sad. And I've had a class with her last semester, so I saw her quite a lot. And she didn't look the way that she normally does. Even though she's a little bit more quiet and withdrawn normally, there was something different about her that day. And I thought, I need to do something for her. And then I didn't because I just didn't get to it or I forgot or whatever. And the next day in choir, I saw her again and thought, I need to write her a note. And it was like the most powerful and overwhelming feeling. Yes, you do. Get it done. (laughs) It didn't say get it done. But in my head, I was like, I need to get that done. So then I wrote her a note, and I gave it to her the next day in choir, and then a few weeks after that, or maybe a week and a half after that, she came up to me, and she told me that she was really grateful for the note, and that it came at the most perfect time. I said, well, I don't know why that happened, but you do, and she said, yeah, I do, and it's so cool when you get to serve others, and they come up to you and tell you that it meant something to them, and you don't always get to see that, but I'm grateful for the times that I do and the times that I don't. Number 15, I'm grateful for thoughtful gifts. Like I said, Keely gave me this really wonderful gift, but I've also gotten other gifts from people and they've just been so thoughtful and kind and I feel really loved. Number 16, the temple. I'm grateful for the temple. It's just a wonderful place to be. Number 17, I'm grateful for technology. I'm grateful for the opportunity to record on my podcast and share my thoughts with you. I'm grateful for technology to keep in contact with people that live far away. I'm grateful for technology in school. Technology just makes life a lot easier with certain elements, so I'm grateful for technology. Number 18, I'm grateful for leaders who reach out. I have a few leaders in my life right now, Sister Topham being one of them. My bishop's really good too. And then in my youth and in my teenage years, the leaders who reached out to me They helped me and really made my life better and honestly gave me purpose a lot of the times when I was struggling. So I'm really grateful for leaders. 
Number 19, I'm really grateful for happiness and joy. Once again, not something that I've experienced a lot in my youth, in my teenage years especially, but now it's constant and I am so grateful for it. Number 20, my podcast and blog. I'm so grateful for them. It just feels like such a blessing and I hope to never take advantage of how blessed I am to have a blog and a podcast. Okay, 20 things I've learned. I feel like I just need to kind of read these because I don't want to go over time. So I might expand on some of them and I might just say them. Number one, life is so much better when you're laughing. As I've said before, I laugh and I smile a lot and it just makes life better. So number one, life is so much better when you're laughing. Number two, amazing and lifelong friends exist. You just have to go out there and find them. Number three, being vulnerable is scary, but it's worth it. Number four, the Savior loves me and knows me personally. And I know that he loves you and knows you personally too. Number five, human connection is not a want. It is a fundamental need. We were talking about this in several of my classes, actually. Two of them very specifically talked about how connection and relationships is a need, not a want. Number six, things work out in the end. If it hasn't worked out, it's not the end. I know that could be hypocritical since I'm worrying about a few things that haven't worked out, but I do know that it will work out (laughs) one day. Number seven, you are never alone. Number eight, one person can make a difference. Number nine, people need and love you. Number 10, it's actually so much easier to trust the Lord than hold on to all that worry by yourself. That's kind of a little bit scary to say because I don't want to invalidate anyone because trusting in the Lord is hard. I totally know that. But when you do trust him and give your worries over to him, It's more relieving. You don't have to hold on to all that worry and hope everything works out. You'll just know that it will. Number 11. Divine design is a thing. It's happened to me many times. Number 12. Forgiveness heals. All parties involved are benefited. Number 13. It's okay and encouraged to be yourself. Even if you're goofy and silly or sullen and withdrawn. Maybe sullen actually is not the best thing. I hope you're happy, (laughs) but it's okay to be yourself. And I encourage you to more fully embrace yourself. Number 14, good is out there. You just have to look for it. You look for good and you'll find it. You look for bad and you'll find that too. Number 15, prayer works and is powerful. I already explained on my episode called to serve that I wasn't sure if I should go on a mission or not, and I changed my prayers, and then I felt peace, and it really works. Prayer works and is powerful. Number 16, future you always appreciates past you's work and effort. Help yourself out today, and tomorrow you will be grateful. Number 17, the time machine is now. Today is the day. Today is the day to do whatever you're thinking about doing someday. Today is the day. Number 18, follow your instincts slash impressions slash promptings. Your gut knows, or Heavenly Father knows, and is telling you things. Go follow them. Be brave, be vulnerable, and go do the things that you've been prompted to do. Number 19, hope is never, ever lost. I have a very personal testimony of this, and I know this is true. Number 20, the best is yet to come. Overall, I'm really, really grateful for the 20 years of life that I've lived. I'm grateful for the things that I'm proud of. I'm grateful for the things I'm grateful for. (laughs) And I'm grateful for the things that I've learned. I think that there's so much in life to learn from. And there's so much in life to be grateful for. And there's so many things that we can be proud of. I know that we are never alone. And that he loves us and cares for us. And will never abandon us. Today... For the quote of the day, I'm going to share a scripture. This is Matthew 17, 20. I'll skip the first like sentence or two and just say what favorite part. But it is, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible unto you. I know that with faith, nothing's impossible. And with faith, he's there for us and we can move mountains. For the word of the day (laughs) it's ineffable too great or extreme to be expressed or described in words it's an adjective and I wanted to share this word for quite some time but I feel like it just works perfectly here I feel so blessed I feel like 
the amount of blessings I have is ineffable to understand. It's too great. It's too extreme. And I just feel so overwhelmed with gratitude and with joy and with love and understanding that everything will be okay and that life works out. I know that that's easier said than done. I really truly do. But that being said, I am really grateful for everything in my life that has led me to where I am today because I am doing really well and I'm really grateful for that. Thank you so much for being here, for listening, and for supporting me. I really, really appreciate it and I hope you know that you are never alone. The best is yet to come and that hope is never lost. Embrace imperfection, find meaning, satisfaction, and joy from the journey. I'm Kyra and this is Imperfectly Broken, the podcast. Do 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 do